Hey guys, my name is Anthony and in today's video I'm going to be bringing you my beginner's track guide for the second of the new tracks, Zandfort. Now I probably just butchered that name, I don't really actually know how to say it, but yeah, I'm not going to lie to you guys, um, as you can see at the top right hand side of the screen I was doing 15 laps. In this session it was, it was a little bit of a struggle to really hook up a good lap for me. This is definitely a track that I'm not used to and I definitely need to do a lot more practice in order to get pretty good at and by pretty good I mean I want to be able to do at least you know mid to high eights around here very consistently and this lap was a 1 minute 9.3 so it is decently quick but at the same time I, I definitely think I could have done a little better than what I've done here but this lap is still good enough to really give a track guide on so coming up to this corner you want to break at the 50 meter board or just before the 50 meter board and you don't obviously want to lock up there I did and I'll sort of get into that a little bit later when it comes to the setup and then coming up to this corner now which I believe is turn 12 or something like that you want to pretty much break at the start of that curb down to third and then down to second for this left hander and then coming up to the essentially the final breaking point you want to break and turn at the 50 meter board you don't want to do what I did there you don't want to put your right hand tires on that curb you do lose a little bit of time if you do that you want to try and stay on the track and then you know coming up to the end of it you want to sort of keep hug to the right hand side so that you can get that little bit of extra time but getting into a natural detailed version of this for this first turn I break pretty much at that whiteboard which is just after the 100 meter board and I slow the clip down just to show you once again you need to break in a complete straight line and then as you sort of slowly start turning into the corner you lift off the brakes I break to third and then one last downshift to second just to get the car rotated and then shift back up to third and to fourth and then coming up to turn four now you want to break pretty much when that crane disappears from your screen. I know it's a weird breaking point, but it's the best I've got right now. And you sort of want to hug the left hand side of that sort of camber sort of thing as much as possible just to get the best line out of that corner as possible. So moving on to turn eight now, ideally you don't want to break here, but in this situation I did. Uh, you just want to slightly break if you need to and then break down to sixth gear and then straight back up to seventh gear just so that you don't end up losing the car and for that turn you want to break and turn up 50 meter board for turn 10 you want to break just before the 50 meter board and as you can see in this corner i did end up blocking up which did lose a little bit of time but if you don't lock up you can gain quite a bit of time there and then for this corner you sort of want to break and start turning around the 50 meter board and then just try and short shift to get the best traction out of the corner as possible so coming up to turn 12 you want to break at the start of this uh, sort of curb there break down to third and then down to second for this left hander and try to get the best exit possible and then for this last corner as I said before you want to break and start turning at the 50 meter board and don't run onto that curb because you do that inside curb I should say on the right hand side because you don't want to lose that little bit of time that you may have gained so I'm going to leave you guys here now and we're going to go over the setup for this track Hey guys, so yeah, we're here at the setup and looking at the aerodynamics, I chose three six wings. Uh, you could maybe adjust this by a little bit. Maybe I'd recommend say, you know, four seven or maybe even four six, depending on your driving style or something like that. Um, there are a lot of flowing corners, nice flowing corners on this track. So you do want to have uh, a little bit more front down force if that's sort of your driving style. For me, when I'm trail braking, it's a lot easier to have a little bit less uh, wing at the front and I like to have a lot more wing at the back to basically provide stability and traction coming off of corners so moving on to transmission now once again you know this is pretty much a default um, I think my default is 50 65 but for me I feel that 50 70 sort of works uh, any recommendations I probably would maybe adjust the on throttle a little bit but you can do that in the MFD so you don't really need to worry about doing it here for the off throttle I think anywhere between 60 and 70 is pretty good uh, for this track so you know I'd recommend just messing around with it a little bit seeing what works for you 70 works for me but it might not work for you so I'll definitely say maybe in between 60 and 70 is pretty good. For the suspension geometry, I chose this. Now, this is essentially just based off of my 
a default which my default sort of looks like this so it sort of looks like this as my default so what i did is i just started doing a little bit of adjusting and i found that for me personally this is the sort of setup that sort of works best for me again you can take these and sort of tinker around with them just to make sure that everything works to your liking uh, i just do it because you know i like the way it feels i like the stability of the car with these sort of settings now moving on to the suspension now i've got two five for the suspension again i like to have more rear suspension I, just to keep the car stable through corners and i use the less front suspension just to sort of help uh sort of get the car over curbs and stuff like that as well and then moving on to anti-roll bars now i've got six nine for those um as you can see in the sort of little description there when it comes to the anti-roll bar uh, stiff anti-roll bars will reduce the amount of body roll while it's turning corners i don't like the car to really be turning uh, the back end of the car to really be turning when i'm going through corners i like it to be sort of stable so that's why i have a higher rear anti-roll bar than in front i do like the sort of combination of having less wing so that you can really get that straight line speed but then at the same time also having you know more uh, soft anti-roll bar so that you can still get the car turned in when you need to and then moving on to front right height now there are some curbs on this track which are uh, quite aggressive uh, you know they're quite high up so and sometimes you do really need to cut the corners in sort uh, in order to get the time on the track so that's why i've sort of gone for the 2-4 it's just a good balance for me uh, personally but you can sort of toy around with it i would recommend always keeping the rear right height around about two clicks higher than the front again this is just to help the stability of the rear uh, especially if your driving style is like me where you really like the rear to be sort of planted you don't really like the oversteer nature of the car if you do like the oversteer nature of the car then yeah sure maybe you could go with two three if that's what you're comfortable with or maybe even um sort of sort of a three three or a three four just depends on you this is sort of the setup that i'm going with personally and then for the brakes my standard brakes i'm probably going to start working on you know just messing around with the brakes right now i've really just been doing 100 on the brake pressure and uh 52 on the front the brake bias as you've seen in that lap it wasn't necessarily a good lap i did lock up a few times so for this one i would probably recommend maybe going down to 95 or even 90 and then maybe you know doing 54 on the front brake bias just so that you're not really locking up as much as i was in this lap personally and then for the tires what I've gone and done is I've sort of focused more on having the right side of the car have more tire pressure and the reason for that is because um, Zandvoort is an, a clockwise sort of track so you are going to be turning to the right more which means that there's going to be more pressure on the left tires so what I've gone and done is I've made the left tires a little bit softer and that's really just to reduce the sort of tire temperatures because as you can see in the description on the right hand side increased tire pressures contribute to a higher tire temperatures and you don't really want to have too high of tire temperatures on a lap or else it is going to slow you down you are going to see a little bit of oversteer um, when going at, when coming out of corners because the tires are hot so you know the main two tires that are going to be doing most of the work are the left hand tires on this track so i try to keep them as soft as possible just to sort of you know keep the sort of tire temperatures down and that's pretty much the setup that i've got personally for zanfort you can take this setup and then you can just tweak it make sure that you know some of the settings are the way that you want them to be i have given you some suggestions so maybe you can go out there and do that so if you want to see more track guides similar to this or if you want to actually see some tip videos where i sort of talk about how to drive without assist or how to drive faster without assist then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel or stick around because i'm going to be uploading those type of videos in the near future so i'll see you guys in the next video